In this video, I'm going to be talking about delusion and deception. So I'm going to go through several scriptures, and my intention of doing this is to give you some sort of an understanding because uh, a lot of people are talking about the great deception right now, and they have all different kinds of theories about what the great deception is. The great deception is everything, all the ways that wickedness is deceiving those who are perishing, all the ways. Not one way, not alien theory, not flat earther theory, not false messiah theory, not, oh, all those who, you know, worship on Sunday. It's the Sunday Sabbath people. They're in the great deception. Enough of that already. It's all of the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. All, all of the ways. The cross to Tammuz, the image of the cross that you were never supposed to set up, the little nativity scenes, those little statues of Jesus, images, pictures of Jesus, Sunday Sabbath, Christmas, Easter, false messiahs, false covenant, already saved doctrine, all of the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. Please, as I'm doing this video, examine your heart on whether you've been deceived in any of these areas. And don't think that you are somehow unique from everybody else because you came out of a cult. Guess what? All of us are coming out of a cult. It's called Babylon. And all of the ways wickedness has deceived us who were once perishing. If we don't come out of those things, if we're attached to any of them, well, I really like Christmas and all my family celebrates Christmas and it's a happy time of year. So I'm going to keep doing it. If there is anything that you are still connected to, your deeds will not be finished in the sight of his God. He will spit you out of his mouth because you are neither hot nor cold, because you have decided to be lukewarm. So if there is anything that you're still holding on to, pray for God to turn your heart. You don't have the ability to fulfill this covenant on your own. You need to trudge it with him. Psalm 12, 2. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. I mean, do you see that in the times we're living in? These David was talking about it in the times he was living in. How much worse is it now? Is wickedness getting better or is it increasing? Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. They manipulate. They are liars. They're lovers of self. If you can't see this at this point in history, there's a problem. Proverbs 14, 8, the wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways, but the folly of fools is deception. Proverbs 26, 26, their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Jeremiah 3, 23, surely the, by the way, who exposes us? Who's going to expose us in the assembly? When God's people come together, is he not going to expose the wicked? Have we seen that happen in our assembly? Have we seen people's hearts be exposed. We most certainly have, both for good and for wickedness. We've seen both. God's the one who's exposing that. Jeremiah three twenty three. surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains is a deception. Surely in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. Jeremiah 9, 6, you live in the midst of deception. In their deceit, they refuse to acknowledge me, declares the Lord. Uh, what does that mean? I mean, do you see that right now in counterfeit Christianity? You live in the midst of deception. In their deceit, they refuse to acknowledge me, declares the Lord. These are people who even claim to be acknowledging him, but they don't have a relationship with him from Adam. They don't know him. And we know that because Jesus said many will come to him in that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we eat with you in your name? Didn't we do all these things, drive out demons? Delusion, deception. They do not acknowledge him. And the passage just before it, Jeremiah 3, 23. Surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains is a deception. Surely in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. I was driving home yesterday from a car dealership because I went to cross over my lease into a buyout. I needed to make a, de a, a decision about that. And as I was driving home, I know every time I go to the car dealership, I know that I'm being played. These guys couldn't even keep maintain their agreement to clean my car correctly. I know that they're liars. We all know they're liars. That's why we have a thing about car dealers, right? Or car salesmen. They act like they're your best friend. And I was really grieved by it. I was just disgusted. But I also thought, you know what? Okay, 
I had already made up my mind. I'm only going to be here for a couple years anyway. I need to make a decision about what I'm going to do. And this makes the most sense. So as I was driving home, I was talking to him about it and I was kind of um, complaining. Why did you have me do things this way? Why did you have me do them that way? And part of what God has been teaching me is that he has had me bear the brunt of other people's sin and their dishonest behavior in order to give that person an opportunity to turn to him, to do the right thing. And it is part of my job to be used by him in this way and to trust that he's going to take care of me anyway. So I was complaining and I was telling him, why did you have me do this? Why did you have me do that? Why didn't you protect? I asked you about this and you told me to do this particular thing. And now, you know, this situation, and I was going through that whole thing. And he drew my attention to the plants on the hillside and the hillside that was right next to where I was driving. And he said, all of this is going to pass away. All of it. It's all going to pass away. Stop complaining. My goodness. I mean, nothing like that, (laughs) like him speaking like that to me to really whip me into shape. And sometimes I really appreciate that he speaks to me like that and puts me in my place. You're here to be used by me, not the other way around. I don't accommodate to your will. You need to accommodate to mine. Surely the idolatrous commotions on the hills and mountains is a deception. All of these things that these foolish people are holding up as being their God, deceiving other people and choosing wickedness, even while talking about God. You know, the salesman and I, as they were doing our, the paperwork, sat there and had a conversation about God. We had a conversation because he was telling me how his wife had PCOS and the doctor told her it was a miracle that they had this child and blah, blah, blah. And so we ended up in a, you know me, we ended up in a conversation about doctors not being gods and that God did that not the doctors. And he said he believed. And we had an entire conversation. He even teared up. And then he didn't follow through on something he told me he was going to do. Something so simple. He didn't follow up on it. Everyone wants something for themselves. This is such an incredible time of deception. And they don't even realize that this idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains, the important people of the world, The powerful people of the world, the doctors, the politicians, the lawyers, they live in deception. They're not serving him. How? You tell me how they can work in a system like that and serve God. They're liars. There was no option for me to continue to stay in the field that I was trained in because there was no place for God. I could not continue to do it. I was once one of the important people of the world in that idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains And thank God he has brought me low and to the scum of the earth that I might know that the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. That I might know that the things of God are not the things of the world. They are the things that the world thinks are just so low and so pathetic, weak, foolish. I've been important in the world before. It's a deception. It is a deception that has gripped those who are perishing because everything is going to come around in the end. Everything will be laid bare. People will be dealt with according to what they have done. I believe that with all my heart. That guy that I was talking with yesterday, we talked about that and he went and did such a stupid thing, made such a stupid decision. Why? Because these people honor him with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. They flatter each other with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. And you need to ask yourself the question, what are your motives? Is your heart laid bare before God or not? Because only he is able to tell you whether you're clean. And if you're able to do things like this, like exploit people or take advantage of them, but then delude yourself into thinking that you're in him and he's not moving you back into correcting yourself or you're lying, lies are coming out of your mouth and something's not changing, something is wrong. You should be on a continuous upward trajectory. John tells us that anyone who deliberately keeps on sinning is not in Christ. There is no salvation for that person. Hosea 10, 13, but you have planted wickedness. You have reaped evil. You have eaten the fruit of deception because you have depended on your own strength and on your many warriors. The roar of battle will rise against your people so that all your fortresses will be devastated as Shalman 
devastated Beth Arbel on the day of battle when the mothers were dashed to the ground with their children. That's serious stuff. Like that is not something to mess with. Sow righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplowed ground for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. But you've planted wickedness. You have reaped evil. You have eaten the fruit of deception because you have depended on your own strength and on your many warriors. The roar of battle will rise against your people. You understand that judgment is coming for these very things. Like no one's going to go hide their stuff under a rock or stuff it into a closet or sweep it under a rug. Everything is already laid bare before the Lord and he is not happy. I have been sitting with the Lord today, talking with him about these things, about the incredible deceptions and about the fact that he can't even give truth away for free. That's how bad it's gotten. He can't even give this away for free. No one wants it, but they'll go out and pay money to go listen to Joyce Myers. They'll go pay money to watch Joel Osteen. They'll pay money to Kenneth Copeland, who's got a private jet. He's rolling in the dough of wickedness so badly that these are the things he can afford. But God's people are afflicted and broke in poverty and God's gospel trampled underfoot. The son of God and the gift he's given us that he has extended to us in his covenant trampled underfoot. How can we be saved? Think about that question. How can we be saved if this is how we behave? We won't even take it for free. People who just ditch out on the stuff that's being offered to them for free have obligations. Oh, really? What are your obligations? What are your commitments before God? Tell me that. The same people who will call me up and look for a psychologist and tell me, As a psychologist, right? I'll do anything. I'll do anything. I extend it to them for free. I've had people contact me and say, I don't know if I can afford your rate. That's okay. I will give this to you for free. You don't have to pay me anything. Here's what you need to do. You need to fast. You need to return to God so that he's your number one because that's the only way you'll any of this will stick. Never hear from them again. What's the deal? These people will pay so much money to false teachers who don't hold them accountable because it's easy and they'll never experience healing. But I can't give it away for free. God can't give it away for free. That's how obstinate his people are. That's the level of wickedness that we're living in right now. It's free to you. And you know what people do with it? They read, they cherry pick scriptures, make up their own gospel, take what's been freely given to them and distort it. Take something that was freely given to them and try to capitalize on it by making a business of God. What's going on here? By keeping him on their lips when it's convenient for them, when they want the business of someone who is proclaiming God. This is so filthy and disgusting. It is no wonder he's going to bring what he's going to bring, what he has said that he's going to bring. It's no wonder that he's, why he says in Jeremiah, I tried to make you clean, but you would not have it. You would have none of it. Therefore, this is what's going to happen. You will not be clean again until my wrath has passed by. I'm sorry, that's Ezekiel 24. Verse 13, now your impurity is lewdness because I tried to cleanse you, but you would not be cleansed from your impurity. You will not be clean again until my wrath against you has subsided. My wrath against you. These are all the people who say, oh no, God's wrath isn't for us. We're going to be pre-trib raptured. Wickedness, foolishness. Now listen to what he says about that. Ezekiel 14, 21. Why is he going to do it? For this is what the sovereign Lord says. How much worse will it be when I send against Jerusalem my four dreadful judgments? sword and famine and wild beast and plague to kill its men and their animals. Yet there will be some survivors, sons and daughters who will be brought out of it. They will come to you. And when you see their conduct and their actions, okay, they'll be put through the fire. As it says in Daniel 12, many will be made spotless, purified and refined. You're going to know why God had to bring all of this wrath on his own people. They will come to you, and when you see their conduct and their actions, you will be consoled regarding the disaster I brought on Jerusalem. Every disaster I have brought on it, stop saying it's the devil. You will be consoled when you see their conduct and their actions, for you will know that I have done nothing in it without cause, declares the Lord. That is God's attitude towards the wrath that is coming 
during the Antichrist reign. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone's to die by the sword, by the sword they will be killed. Where, where does anyone get pre-trib rapture out of that? Where does anyone get, oh, God's wrath isn't for us. No, God's great wrath is not for you if you are indeed in him. God's been bringing wrath on his people since the beginning of time. What do you think this curse is? What do you think that is? Eve ate a piece of fruit she wasn't supposed to eat. What do you think he's going to bring on you? God's great wrath passes over his people in, if indeed they are his people. Because God's great wrath is for the wicked. 2 Corinthians 4.2 Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. You know, I'll use this example again of the car dealership. I don't do that. You know, I don't do business that way. I've never done business that way. I've never haggled with people. If they want to try to cheat, then they will receive their reward. They'll receive their reward here. But I am to be used by God to expose who people are, to expose what's in their heart. And I take the brunt because I know God and I know that he will take care of me and I know what he tells me to do. I don't get anxious about these things. I don't start fighting against it. I don't start trying to micromanage anything. I know God. I know he will take care of me. I know he is my vindicator. I am to give to those who ask of me. No, it's not easy to do, but it's what he has commanded, isn't it? And always spirit led, guys. You know, you always go back to him and you ask him, is this what you want me to do in this situation? So interesting because these are the people who talk about karma, whatever that is. Yes, you are going to get what's due to you. That's the God you believe in. That's the God you'll be handed over to. But we are commanded as Christians to set forth the truth plainly, to commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Everything is done in the sight of God. Do you think that those people who did these things yesterday at the car dealership, do you think that they're hiding somewhere under a rock? I mean, what is it worth anyway? What is their soul worth? A couple fancy nights out at my expense. Like all of that stuff passes away. But God's people will not pass away. Deeds of righteousness will not pass away. We will be wearing them. The word tells us in Revelation that God's people are going to be dressed in white, which stands for the righteous acts of God's people. Titus 1.10, for there are many rebellious people full of meaningless talk and deception, especially those of the circumcision group. <laughs> especially those of the circumcision group. By the way, the circumcision group fancied themselves religious, fancied themselves the chosen people of God. Psalm 4.2, how long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Psalm 119 118, you reject all who stray from your decrees, for their delusions came to nothing. Jeremiah 14, 14, then the Lord said to me, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own minds. Jeremiah 23, 26, how long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? And finally, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. Signs and wonders that serve the lie and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. All the ways. Not one, all the ways. Who's the lawless one, by the way? The lawless one is Satan. It's the work that Satan is doing behind this kingdom. We've been told that this is a kingdom. In Daniel 7 and Revelation 17, we know undoubtedly that the Antichrist is a kingdom. It's not a man. The man of lawlessness is Satan. And he will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. What's the lie? Counterfeit Christianity, which is a kingdom counterfeit religion is a kingdom it started with babylon the great the harlot riding the beast papal rome it has grown into a kingdom of prostitute daughters that bore out of her that is the reason why revelation says that babylon the great is the mother of all 
prostitutes. The lie is counterfeit Christianity and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. If that includes alien theories and flat earth theories and AI and a chip and a tattoo and a jab and whatever other conspiracy theories that you want to include in that Sunday worship, it includes all of the falsehood that people have believed because God says, come out of Babylon, come out of the lie and the lie has got to come out of you in order for you to come out of the lie. They perish because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth. Oh, is the truth just one thing in the word? Just one thing is the truth in the word? No, it's all of the word. So then the lie is everything in opposition to the word. The lie includes all of that idolatry and false doctrines so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. The lie, the delusion, the deception includes a lot of delusions and deceptions. But see, you can't have like a couple of things that you're holding on to and then say, well, I'm almost there, like I'm, I'm mostly good. If you read Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus has said very clearly, you're doing this, this, and this well. Here are the things I hold against you. Your deeds are unfinished in the sight of my God. You are neither hot nor cold. I wish you'd choose one, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth and I'm going to remove your lampstand. He has not given you a contract, a covenant, that you can pick and choose what you're going to do based on what's easy for you and what you prefer. He has given you a contract, a covenant, that needs to be finished in the sight of his God if you are to be saved. If you have faith, then you will believe. If you have faith, then you will obey that contract. If you don't, you'll pick and choose in order to justify yourself. And on the day of the Lord, when you're trying to justify yourself before him, he will respond to you, depart from me, evildoer, I never knew you. That's his message. It's not my message. If you don't like it, take it up with him. That's his message. It couldn't be more plain. It is delusion and deception to believe that you can pick and choose which parts of the covenant. And I got to tell you, part of what I see consistently is that this gift has been given to you for free. God has sent servants and messengers and prophets, his son, his apostles, his witnesses. We can't even give this away for free. That's where I'm at today. That's the, that is the grief that I'm bringing to him today that I've been sitting with him on for a few days now because I'm so disgusted in my soul. I'm so disgusted and so grieved that I gave up everything to do this and I can't even give it away for free. And then I hear people say, I've got something more important to do. Sure, yeah, I'll be here whenever you're ready. God will be here whenever you're ready, right? Because all I'm experiencing is a version of the way that people treat him. He'll be here when you're ready. That's actually not a guarantee. That is a way that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. That is not a guarantee that you should be staking your salvation, your eternal life on. Please discern this message with God.